Number 40 is a guy not known for his trash talk, instead known for his beautiful floppy hair, and that is our first Canadian on the list, maybe our only Canadian on the list, one Steve Nash. Number 40, Steve Nash. So you guys know this already. Back-to-back MVP, what you might not know is this. The th- after he went, he won the MVP. The next year he won it again. The very next year, Dirk's year, he came in second. He almost won three straight MVPs. He is a four-time 50, 40, 90 guy. He won five assist titles and it's all NBA teams. Three-time first team, the three years I just mentioned. Two-time second team, two-time third team. So seven total all NBA teams. And his apex with the Suns. I mean, they were the seven second or less sons were a real thing. And the way if the, if he probably would have shot more, if he would have shot more threes, if they would have had the data that we have now, maybe they do break through. And they did have some bad luck. Demonte, you're too young to remember this, but Joe Johnson was a key player for them. Breaks his face during one playoff run. The notoriously cheap Robert Sarver won't pay him and he ends up going to Atlanta. Another one, Amari Stoudemire gets suspended after uh, Steve Nash gets body checked by Robert Ory, so he gets suspended for a critical game against the Spurs. They lose. So he had his opportunities. Sometimes they were, you know, you feel like there's some big what ifs. With that said, it's not like he didn't have great playoff moments despite that. He was the best player on a team that made three conference finals. And people should go back and think about when he truly broke through. The year he won league MVP, they are playing Dirk, his old team. His old teammate, Dallas, the team that wouldn't pay him in the West, in the Western Conference semis. Games four, five, and six to move on. Here's what Steve Nash did to get to his first career conference finals to beat his old team to beat Dirk. Game four, 48, five, and five, but they lost. So now it's two to two. Game five, 34, 13, and 12. They win and move and get to a game six. Game six, 39, 9, and 12 to get to his first career Western Conference Finals. All right, so then think about what he did the following year. Down 3-1 to Kobe and the Lakers. Now, it wasn't a great Lakers team, but down 3-1 in the first round. How did he do? Well, he goes 32-13 and in Los Angeles in Game 6 and then beats Kobe in a Game 7, the famous game where Kobe refused to shoot in the second half. So a 3-1 comeback against Kobe when he's the best guy, that's got to matter. From During his three years of when he won league MVPs and almost won a third, in the playoffs, in the playoffs, 21-11 and 11 on 50-40-90 in the playoffs over that three-year stretch. And then the brief Steve Nash kind of renaissance, when it looked like the Suns run was over, they make another Western Conference Finals in 2010, And in Western Arms Finals Game 5, it's 2-2 against the Lakers. The defending champion Lakers is a chance to break through and get to your first NBA Finals. He has 29-11, and and that's the game the Suns had won. And then Meta World Peace tips it in. The Lakers go up 3-2, and once again, there's a big what-if with Nash. So his apex didn't last quite as long as some other guys because he got started slow because he wasn't really the centerpiece of a guy until he'd been in the league a damn near a decade. But once he was the centerpiece of a team, they damn near reinvented basketball. He's the 40th best player despite his defensive limitations of the last 50 years. Let's get to our Steve Nash caller. Question for you, Nick. Do you think that Nash's back-to-back MVPs have actually hurt his legacy? That so many people make a point of proving that he didn't deserve back-to-back MVPs the pendulum has actually swung too far. And if he just had the one MVP, it'd be like, yeah, you know what? He deserved that MVP. But the fact that he got back to back, people want to knock him down. Maybe having one would have been better than having two. What do you think? So I think it's an interesting point by Wilds, my buddy, that does the back to back MVPs thing almost get used as a cudgel against Nash because we look back on it. And we're like, oh my God, he shouldn't have been back to back MVP. To a degree, I agree with him that it may- maybe gets used against him in some barroom arguments, but I don't think it's, it, for me, it doesn't get used against him when people who know what they're talking about stack him up against the other all-timers, because just like with Shaq, you don't hold against him, he only won one, he probably should have three, 
I don't really, I don't add a ton to Nash's case because he has that second MVP. It's more, there was this brief three-year stretch of time where he was one of the five best players in the league. And that is immensely valuable. It's as similar as the situation that Dwight had. There's a stretch of time where you're a consensus, one of the five best guys. The fact that he won a couple MVPs doesn't help him as much as some might think it should, but it certainly doesn't hurt him in, in my eyes. Now, had he won a third straight, which he almost did, and the list of guys with three straight MVPs are Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain, Larry Bird, and Steve Nash, that wouldn't have been great. That might have got him kicked off the list on principle, but they didn't. Dirk ended up winning. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.